What's going on everyone? We are here, that's right, on four different platforms. Got to start it off here in the Caesar Studio. So we are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you all so much for tuning in today on this lovely Friday, October 7th. I am hanging out in the Caesar Studio with none other than Patrick Ali. We are, we have a huge, huge event for you here. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since we've been on, I think, been, uh, yeah. live. In case you've been following all the chaos of Caesar North America or Caesar <laughs> around the globe, uh, two weeks to this day, if you're watching yeah. this live right now, two weeks to this day, we came out with a huge announcement that we happened to do over in Italy. Yeah. Um, and that is the brand new Caesar Juliet Cutter that we have before us. Yeah. And we know all of you right now watching have been waiting so patiently to find out more information about it. So that is what we are doing today in this live. If you're watching it, hashtag replay. This is gonna be forever on our YouTube channel. It's gonna be forever on our Facebook. It'll be on our Instagram, TikTok. Sorry you're 24 hours, but uh, we will get to everyone's questions. Yeah. So I do wanna preface this before we start saying hello to individuals watching in right now. But I want to let you know that we're going to try to stay on task with what yeah. we're talking about. I know there's going to be a bunch of questions coming through the comments. I know this. I want that. Uh, but I want you to know that if you're watching whatever platform you're on, we have a ton of Caesar people watching in those platforms and we'll get to your questions. Yes. So keep those going. We're going to be talking. I have, look at this, front and back questions you guys gave oh, us and to clarify that's the condensed it is very so condensed, get, yeah, that's yeah, the condensed there's well, a lot yeah. of rep repeat yeah, questions yeah. so we have ones that are kind of staying on task um so we are going to stay with uh certain topics we're going to try to avoid going back yeah. so if you see people popping on as we go along if you could help us out and also help answer the questions that maybe we already answered we're going to try to cover as much as we can here in this live on all these platforms. So I have to say that first, of course. Um, but that brings us to what yeah. we're doing today. So Pat, I have to here. give a big shout out to Pat here because Pat yeah. has been a big part of the creation of this cutter as well as the software we're going to be showing you that goes with the Caesar Juliet cutter. Um, so before we get in, let's let's do a couple shout outs, yeah. right? Who's who's tuned in right now? I have uh, Trev hanging out with us. He's running YouTube and uh, Facebook. Chloe will be on TikTok. So who's watching? Do we have any shout outs? Anything going yeah, on? We got a lot of shout outs. We got uh, Libby Ashcraft. Hi, hey, Libby. 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 Uh, Lucia, hi from Italy. Sarah Lucia. Clark. Sarah, uh, Sarah, Sarah Clark. Clark. Uh -oh. Amanda. Amanda's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Sally. Hey, Sally. What's going on, everyone? Hey. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of wild, actually, that you said before this, too, um, that it's been two weeks. Two weeks. To the date, that we're in very different yeah. locations. You go yeah. on the other side of the world, me and Charlotte, and this thing has been like a whirlwind. This has been an incredible experience the last two weeks. Right. So it's uh, we're excited finally so to give them the info. Two we'll weeks, September 16th. Yeah. So again, if you're watching this way later yeah. down the road, <laughs> yeah. this is October 7th today. So yeah. two weeks ago on September 16th, yeah. we did announce that. Yeah. Um, so of whatever year you're in. If this yeah, is 2072, you're watching it. <laughs> it was the 16th of that September in 2072. Well, I so. guess that's three weeks, isn't it? Could probably I think we're three weeks. But who knows? What I mean, I you're still jet lagged. Yeah, I've I'm been still traveling recovering. a ton. We're, we're, there. we're there, though. And I'm glad that when you said the date, you didn't look to me for the date. I know. Yeah. That was, so, yeah. That so, was there, so it's been three weeks. Yeah. Okay, so it's flying by. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get on to it. Okay. So, this before us. The Juliet Cutter comes in this fine box that you're going to get. Now, we're going to go over quickly the contents. We obviously already have this one opened up, mm -hmm. but there's some key features that I'm going to let Pat ta yeah. talk about that when you take this out of the box, what's going to come in the box with it, yep. um, and how to properly 
get this going before you plug it in and start turning it on. Cool. So, so I think before we talk about that, we need to explain why we did this in the first place, right? And it was to bring and bridge the commercial and the craft world together to have one uniform ecosystem to live in. So that was the original intention. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about some things that come in the box. Obviously, we're going to give you a cutter because that's important. Obviously, you have your. Wait, can we can we just can we note the 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 style of this <laughs> yeah. right here? Has anyone out there right now seen a vinyl cutter such as this? Yeah, um, again, it's almost like we made it exactly off of something. So, we kind of were influenced by something <laughs> when we came out with the look and style of this, yeah. unlike other 12 inch cutters Correct. out there. Correct, yeah. So, again, a ton of commercial elements jam packed. We'll go through it, but first, let's talk about what's in the box. Again, cutter you get, your basic USB cord, your power cord, which we have off to the side to make sure that we don't plug it in yet. That we don't plug we it in. We gotta talk about something important first. Because we want you all to see what to do first. <laughs> so with that said too, in the box you get this really convenient and huge shout out to Keith on the team for the yes. beautiful design on this. I know he's floating in the comments. Keith's uh, in the comments. You get a couple of pieces. You get your documentation right here, which is more of your quick start guide, your documentation, as well as QR code to access uh, your software and get your machine registered. In the box as well, we have our accessories. So a couple of accessories that comes with this machine is your blade holder. Uh, you're going to get a couple of different styles of blade. Uh, you'll get 245 degree and 160 degree blade. Uh, and then you'll also get in the box a little convenient uh, marker adapter for our sublimation marker. So we should probably explain why do we get 245 degree and 160 degree blade. Absolutely. So we should probably show the uh, actual holder. We didn't yeah. take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already had. So again, talking about those commercial elements is we want to start teaching people. Yeah, you can see. You see nothing, this. nothing. Didn't open. We wanted to start teaching people and talking about the way that the commercial cutter or operates, but bring it into the craft. That's going to give you a ton of freedom. So we have a commercial blade holder. Uh, it's got a locking nut on there and a push pin on the top. I feel like we're we fly so much that we're like the stewardess right now. <laughs> yeah. Insert the buckle here. Insert but it also has a push here. pin so that you can grab that blade out of there. Super convenient and easy. You can set your blade depth and keep it there uh, for good. But also. The reason we have the two styles of blades, right? You have your 45 degree, which is your standard material, and then that 60 degree, which is typically your deep cut blade. But we also use it as a high definition contouring blade, right? It's mm -hmm. going to get those fine, intricate, small details that a lot of you guys got to see in the teaser video we posted the right. other day, right. where Anna and Clover are just trying to push this thing to the absolute limit. So <laughs> it's, it's, it was great. Uh, with that said, too, you get, obviously, your power cord supply, and then this right here is going to be your power supply pack. Those come in two separate boxes, but you just snap one into the back, throw one into the wall, and one in the back of the cutter, you're ready to put some power in your machine. So we are gonna absolutely have more content down the line explaining each one of these steps. Yes. Just quickly going over some of the basic setups, uh, what comes in the box. So as Pat said, you're gonna get the blades, you're gonna get the blade holder, you're gonna get a pen holder, and then you're also gonna get a mat. Yes. So this so, is super important. We have a light tech mat that'll be in the box with the cutter itself. Um, with that said, the way that you'll be able to tell the difference, although we won't look at that one, the way you'll be able to tell the difference is that the light tech version of our mats will be in a red border. The uh, high tech version of our mats will actually be in like a, I don't know, a charcoal, I'm uh, half maybe, color glass. Maybe so like a charcoal. Yeah, charcoal, no, black. It's definitely a, like a, a gra color. graphite type. Yeah. Exactly. So what we're trying to do is distinguish uh, the difference between the light tack and the high tack. So now you have the convenience of knowing based off the color system exactly what mat is perfect for your project. Absolutely. So, and then with that said, we should probably talk about for the retail side, what's going to be available to purchase after the fact too. You will be able to get housing for your blades. You will be able to get sublimation marker caps. You will be able to get extra blades. Uh, and then is there anything? Oh, no, they're just the three good. I didn't miss anything. Yeah, no, good, you good, got good. it all. You got it all. <laughs> you got all this information in my head. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not going too deep yet, you know? <laughs> so with that said, we should probably talk about simple machine setups. Simple machine setups right when you have it ready to go in the mm -hmm. spot you are going to be placing this down. Mm -hmm. Now, Pat, I'm going to put you on the spot because I have the notes here. Do it. What are the dimensions of this cutter? The physical this dimension, or are we talking about cutting dimension? 
Okay, cool. We got it. <laughs> What are we talking? We have this internal debate. Are we going to talk about machine or are we going to talk about material? No, no, no. The, so actual size. cutting, yeah, actual cutting is uh, 22 inches long. Yeah. So the cool part about that is, and I want to explain the reason why we are able to kind of jam it a little bit smaller than what we originally had, is most people, and we'll find this out later, most cutters, that blade head, you actually lose a little bit of space on that. We have a very unique system that we've added in. Now what you're to referring to is the cutting space. The cutting yeah. space itself. So the, but overall, that also goes the overall is size. is twenty two inch. Twenty two inch. Just yes. over. Yes. So for those that are looking for where you're gonna place this to set up, yeah. it's also roughly about just over fifteen pounds. So you want it definitely has not the weight where you're gonna need to yeah. worry about knocking it over easily. Um, so it does have the feet to set it mm -hmm. down. So you want to make sure you're on a flat surface when yeah. you set it up. You also want to give yourself some clearance. Yes. So when you're, we're going to get into that when we show you the cutting portion of it. But make sure you have a little bit of space on either side of whatever table you're you're setting this up on. <laughs> this is the part of the live where Joe tells me not to jump ahead, then jumps ahead. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just we'll kidding. get there. We'll kidding. get there. We'll get there. We'll get there though. So, anyways, yes. It's a it's a pretty convenient footprint in my in my mind. I mean, as a craft user myself, I know a ton of us in the in the office have used it. We've sent it out to a couple of influencers. They've used it. The footprint is actually pretty sleek and, and slender in comparison to what they have. It, it matches really right. well. So that's a good thing, I think, for uh, small spaces like I get because I literally have this size table at my house to, mm -hmm. to work on. So, so this works. Okay, so we have everything set up. Yes. Everything's on there now. When we open this. You're gonna open it up at the top. You're just gonna lift that at the bottom. You're gonna set your blade up there if you want to. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything plugged in yet, so we have to stress this. I know over on Instagram, you may not be able to see this fully, not plugged but in. it's not plugged in. Now, what, you're gonna have some other styrofoam on here too yeah. that you're gonna have to remove, obviously. You're gonna see some things that are obvious, but I do wanna stress that you're also gonna have these clips that come mm -hmm. on the pinch wheel. These white clips that do sort of blend in, you may not yep. look, think it, it, you may think it's a part of the cutter, but these actually need to be removed. Yep. So before you turn this on, you want to make sure. Go ahead, Pat. We're going to go ahead and do is we'll roll this to the back so you can see the back side of the machine. We have three pinch rollers that will actually help and assist your material or mat to stay on this. Again, jumping ahead, but. Uh, there's one main pinch lever. If you're looking at the back of the machine, it's on the left. If you're looking at the front of the machine, it's going to be on your right hand side. So you're going to take that main lever, put it in the up down position, down. which will end up making the actual pinch wheels raise up. And then Joe and I can simply slide these out, those three, and now we're ready to get our machine turned on. So do not turn your cutter, your Juliet on with these clips on the pinch wheels we have to stress that Let's just get rid of these so uh, yeah use them. do not ever need to use them again <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you can discard them yep uh, and, which... and to clarify too really quick there is one piece of foam that lays across yep. the top there is a foam that holds the housing of the actual head and then the clip these are purely for packaging to make sure that your juliet in the box gets to your house or is you, when you buy it off the shelf that it's shipped and it stays in perfect condition before you open up the box. So yes. make sure, make sure, make sure to remove the white clips. Make sure you do before turning on. Yeah, that's um, we can't stress that as much as we even stress the test cut. And like, you'll you'll, the clips. you'll see yeah. why, right? Because yeah. the clips are going to keep this head and prevent prevent it from moving. Correct. Now we're all good to go. We can actually confidently plug in our power. Um, so we're just going to actually plug that back there. We already have the power supply plugged into the wall. Now the super exciting portion. You, hey, you do the honors. Do I get man. to do the honors? Really? This is your world. I'm just living in it right now. All right. Well, hit see it, this it. fun little button? Beep, 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 beep. There you go. So now. Actual machine will turn on. You'll see the beautiful Juliet logo. Juliet and then logo. what comes next is the greatest. The lights, the camera, the action. There that, it is. That actually moving into so, the machine. If you got to see that head move over, <laughs> this is the stressful part when I see people not removing the clips yet. Yeah. So that head will jam up if those clips are still on there. So this is why we are stressing to take those off before mm -hmm. you turn it on. Yeah. So, and also to, to just speak on why that's so important. Mm -hmm. 
Each Juliet comes pre-calibrated. So whether you're doing your SVG, your regular vinyl designs, paper craft, or you're doing print and cut right out of the box, this is set up to execute that immediately. So with that said, things like not removing clips properly, allowing that head to jam or jostle around could throw the calibration off. Have no fear, we got your back. We'll, right. We're gonna show you how to recalibrate in video content and things like that that'll be in the software side. But that is one of the reasons why we stress that so much. Right. So just wanna make sure that we're all clear on that. So now the cutter is officially on. You can see we have a wonderful added LED light, mm -hmm. which has been very helpful. Again, if you don't need to work in high fluorescent lights or anything like that, you still wanna work at night, you have a good opportunity to see your cut space, setting up your material and functioning the actual cut itself. Um, now here's where it's gonna be a little bit harder to show everybody on screen. We do apologize. Again, we will have more about it, um, but the actual inside the menu button, when you turn the uh, Juliet on, I'll let Pat go through some of the okay. functions that happen inside the menu display screen here. Awesome, so for the ones that we can get the camera tight, this is our uh, user interface, which will be your, your product hub and your material preset hub for your Juliet. And I'm gonna just explain briefly because we'll have more content later on it. On your main screen, you have a couple of options. Your directional arrows to move your head right and left. Also advance your material uh, back and forth. We also have a convenient home button. So as you notice, when the machine turns on, the actual head of the machine will go into the machine, which will allow us more cutting space on the bottom. However, we have that home button. You click it, and that head's just gonna go back home, and it'll, it's ready for your next cut. That said, we also have some convenient things like a test cut. You know that if you listen to Joe, Lily, Stephanie, Anna, anybody you've heard in video content, we stress test cut, test cut, test cut. We made it convenient through it right on the home screen, Absolutely. which I think is awesome. Now, one big uh, piece of the puzzle that we wanted to make sure everybody has. We have content all over the place of what our cut settings are for all of our material. We wanna make it even easier on you. So now you have a home where all your cut settings live. We actually have three pages, your HTV page, your PSV page, and then an other page. Here's why. We have all of our HTV uh, library in here. We have our PSV library in here. And then we also have another page. This acts as number one overflow for the HTV page, but we also left a couple of open spots. Now, I know the video content we've been shooting, they've already <laughs> went way ahead of me on this, but you also have the convenience to select a uh, cut setting, hit rename. You can rename that cut setting, and then you can go into the cut setting and set a custom speed and force, update that setting, but don't have any fear that you're putting the right speed and force in because we put that test cut right on that, exactly. that page as well to make it super convenient. Which even with these presets that we have, mm -hmm. you're still gonna want to do test the cut. test cuts, yes. especially when you're doing jobs repeatedly. Yeah. Now this is fresh out of the box. Yeah. You know your blades are fre coming freshly sharpened, ready to go. Now the, the, the next step really is explaining a little bit more on the detail of the difference with what our blade housing is, uh, how to set this up properly, yep. because this, to some of the people watching right now, are very unfamiliar with yeah. for vinyl cutters. Yeah. This is more of a professional grade blade holder. Um, so this, again, you're setting the depth of the blade. Yes. So as Pat was explaining, there is a way to change that. Now you're gonna just simply load one of your blades if you have a 60 degree or 45 degree blade, you're gonna drop it into the blade housing, uh, which is aluminum. It's a, hey Rudy, it's aluminum. Yeah, but. it's aluminum. <laughs> so what you're gonna do from there, again, you have this the gold nut here that you can That's release. Your nut, yeah. That's your locking nut, right? The silver is going to allow you to either advance, mm -hmm. when you turn it clockwise, you're gonna advance that blade out. I'm only doing this just to show you, hopefully you can kind of see it. Mm -hmm. You do not necessarily want to ever have your blade out that far. Yeah. We're kind of sticking with the rule of thumb. You guys are gonna to have to get familiarized and comfortable for yourselves because there isn't an exact answer for every single material out there. What we're suggesting is roughly about a credit card thickness. So you can kind of use your best estimate as to what that would be. And once you find that, if you think you're good there, you're gonna actually lock that gold, 
the gold nut all the way tight. So this is gonna not allow that to move and shift and push or take or uh, push in the blade or advance it more. Right. So now we're locked in. It's it's how I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Now loading it into well, really quick before oh, you get on that. Yeah. If I have a forty five degree blade. We break the tip of it. We need to change the 45 degree exactly. blade. Do I have to unlock the nut that's and redo it? Nope. No. That's the push pin that you have here. If you want to keep it at the same, you push that out, and then you carefully pull that blade out. So now you can get your next new blade, say that this is new, uh, and you're just going to simply drop it back into the blade holder, and you don't need to adjust it again. You may but this is where you have to do the test cuts on your vinyl cutter. So that is a good point. Yep. You do not have to mess with that again if you don't need to and you're just changing blades. Mm -hmm. Now setting this into the holder here is also important. So you wanna make sure that that's pretty loose. You'll see the, what do we call them? Like the C holder? Or the C clamp, C -clamp. is what I've been calling it and then the ridge of like the blade. We're, we'll, we'll find, yeah, cool we'll find for real terms yeah. for it. Uh, but you'll see that this has a little bit of a beveled advance here on the side. You want to make sure that that drops all the way down. See how I dropped it in there? If I was to lock that in, this would not cut right because my blade is not advanced all the way in. So see how it dropped all the way in now? I know that the blade is going to go and actually hit the material where it's supposed to. Right. So this is where you're going to lock this into place, which is also going to prevent the blade holder itself from moving up and, and down and shifting. So now that's set. And actually we can show too, just while we're on the subject of blade holders, marker adapters and things that go in there, is we've actually made this marker adapter specifically that you can drop it into place in that C-clamp right where that opening is yep. will actually capture that, uh, that marker adapter too. Absolutely. So kind of build everything to that spec, I would say. Which is very convenient. So yeah. that, that's set to go. This basically is how your cutter is going to be set up. Mm -hmm. So right now we're pretty much ready to jump on to the next step, which would be getting the software going. Mm -hmm. So before we get into that, I just want to make sure we kind of covered as much as we could about the overall focused on the cutter. Yeah. If there's any questions on the cutter specifically, please ask. Yeah. And then let's also really quick just state too that the cutter itself, network Wi-Fi enabled and then hardwired. Yeah. Wi-Fi yep. and hardwired. I just want to make sure that we talk about that. On your settings menu, you'll see the Wi-Fi button. In your software, it takes you step by step on how to actually set up your Wi-Fi network as well as register your cutter to be able to wirelessly cut. Right. So yeah. Right. And then uh, really we have to for our friends over the on the other side of the pond. We added a couple things in the general settings menu as well for folks that are on oh, the international Oh yeah, I'm side. sorry. I'm That's okay, sorry. I just yeah, wanna make sure that we tell right. them about yeah. it really quick. We do have the ability, obviously you see the LED screen here. If I don't want the LED screen on, I can turn it off. Right from the general settings menu, I can also make adjustments to lower that uh, LED light in case I'm getting a lot of overcast mm -hmm. and I'm trying to, you know how many times have we been print and cut, registering something, and the light everywhere is affecting us. Especially now, on metallic materials yeah. too, where everything's kind of shiny exactly. and kind of hard to see your cut line on it. Exactly. I almost started singing, but Lily said, don't sing anything copyright, and it was a Disney <laughs> thing, so I won't say anything. We also added convenient alerts too, right within the, uh, the user interface. So I can have my LED, uh, start to light up and basically turn on and off when my cut is complete as well as we'll listen for it Little chime that goes off to let me know that my cuts done So if you're like me and a set it and forget it guy We even threw like the little microwave chime nice. just because it triggers it in our brain right away to go check Also, you have a sleep function. We can change again talking about our international friends can change from metric to imperial right within the user interface as well as five standard languages. So you will get English, Spanish, Italian, French, and German, all within the convenience of your machine and translate all of your pages to make it user-friendly for everyone. Right. And that's what's right. most important. Very for important sure. to where the software is too, yeah. right? Yep. So, yep. Okay, yep. so was there any questions we can answer? Yeah, I have an interesting question about the blade housing. Mm -hmm. Someone asks, do you have to adjust it every time you switch materials? So that is a great. You add, yeah, you can answer that. That is a great question. Now, it, it, we're gonna just give some generalization. 
Now, if you're using, um, like so we're gonna stick with Caesar products yep. for the examples here, but uh, our thinnest is our Easy Weed Stretch product, mm -hmm. heat transfer vinyl, and then our thickest is our Brick 600. So there's a huge difference in over six times the thickness. Um, it may be recommended if you're in a thicker material to advance your blade out a little bit further than if you were cutting Easy Weed or Easy Weed Stretch or any of our thinner products. Yeah. Uh, it would probably be suggested to advance that blade out a little bit more. Also, adjusting your downforce, either right. tweaking it a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on the material. Again, these are just, and we'll even explain it when we recommend the settings we have on our website, right. on our app, they're just ballpark settings. Mm -hmm. Everybody's cutter is going to probably be in a slightly different uh, condition. Yeah, so you right. need to kind of feel that out for yourself, but that may be something you want to look into. Yeah, and great question too, because we've also put a lot of placeholders, we've set a lot of placeholders in place for us as crafters, right? I came from the craft world, got into the commercial world. So we got to see this kind of through two different lenses. So part of that will go into suggestions when you are setting up your cut settings in the software versus the cutter. We'll have little tiny stoppers all over the place. If it's a thicker material you plan to use, it may say, hey, you should use a 60 degree blade for that. Don't forget the mirror. All of those yes. things that are necessary. So if you are brand new to this or you're, you're coming from the world of crafting, of the craft cutters that are out there, we don't have to say them all, we all know them. Uh, then we are walking you through step by step. So I promise you, we will uh, make sure that everybody Absolutely. is well, well informed and learns this thing. I want everybody to kind of become like a teacher of this thing yeah. by the end of the yeah. uh, that's we your want homework, you, people. We want you just as confident, right? Yeah. So this is going to be a learning experience. Mm -hmm. There's obviously going to be more of these kind of lessons and stuff more specific. We're right here, though, we just want to try to get people's questions currently mm -hmm. on what they're seeing about the cutter yeah. answered at least you guys can get a broad strokes of what you can do with this cutter right. the finer detailed stuff will certainly have more content coming down the pipeline mm -hmm. so uh great question for sure rudy showed a great um, the brick 1000 that they have over there showed an incredible uh, you know outcome of what this thing can do for that well, the dude, detail how thin it is you're gonna show them later on we're gonna okay. get there all right so fine. i'll show you i mean this is how confident <laughs> we're at right we're doing demos yeah, live yeah, so yeah. we are gonna we're gonna cruise on to the next part so yeah. one oh. one simple question yeah uh someone asked can you change the cutting speed yes you can absolutely yes you can actually right yep. from the convenient of the cut settings menu yep not only can you change the speed but you can also change the force and update those in real time right. so you can see here Cut speed's in there, my force is in here. Watch, I'm gonna throw the cut off now. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and just click the update button right there, hit update, and I'm done. I just right. updated all of my, my menu options. Right. Great question. Man. It is a great question, and I don't, we're, you're gonna see it in a little bit when we do a live cut, mm -hmm. but just to also highlight what this machine in the capacity of its speed, it being kind of one of those uh, main topics yeah. to talk about yeah. with this machine because yeah. of how fast it cuts and how far it can cut with yeah. one roll of material 100%. but we'll get into that yes. in a little bit great question right. so far again i hope we we have a bunch of people in the in the comments right now hopefully answering your questions we'll get back to them i promise we're just going to shift over now to a topic that we didn't really show much at all so far, uh, not with any of the videos you've probably seen out there, uh, but we're gonna actually get into the software yes. that's going to come with the Juliet cutter. So okay. we'll just kind of move this up here. There we go. Um, so I, I do apologize since we're on three All different platforms. cameras right now, we're not gonna be able to get a clear look uh, uh, exactly on the interface. We'll try to have uh, Pat turn the laptop, maybe get a couple shots if we can, mm -hmm. to show you what the Caesar Leonardo Design Studio looks like. Um, and then we're gonna kind of briefly go into the functionality. We will answer questions about what can be done inside Leonardo, um, what will, how it's going to function with the Juliet, mm -hmm. how to set up, what's going to be available. So I'm going to let Pat explain that. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go, I'm going to simply go page by page, just kind of explain. Absolutely. So in the Leonardo, the Leonardo, Leonardo Juliet, <laughs> in the Leonardo software, 
we basically brought the craft world to the commercial world, whereas the cutter, we brought the commercial world to the craft world, and we're kind of merging both. So on your home page, you're actually going to have a basic home page like any other. I mean, it's a home page, right? That's where we can put all the fun stuff, the new things coming out. There would definitely be a lot of, uh, you know, hyperlinks and things of that nature that will draw you to other pages and other content. It's going to be a really cool uh, source and a hub, I think, for us internally to be able to utilize a tutorials page uh, right now I think it's it's Joe's yeah you got a couple of them and I like that what you got oh. a couple of your videos in oh, there, there you right go. to the forefront so here's <laughs> where we can house all of the cutter content whether it's tutorials we can have featured content on here we even have the ability for some of our partners we can feature them if we want to right in the convenience of the software which is really cool uh, on there as well we have our inspiration page and why I love this so much is that not only are we giving you a completed project but if you go ahead and you click on let's go let's just find something let's do backpacks I like learn how to make a backpack I can click on an inspiration it'll pop up on the screen and not only can I see what it was used to make it the ingredients I also have a blog style post on how to operate and how to actually make that project which is really cool Everybody asks us, we have that question constantly, is what are, do we have a design library? Is there somewhere where I can get stuff? What if I'm not a creator? Well, we actually added a design library right in the convenience of the software, uh, and we have a ton of preloaded designs. Actually, Mama Bear K did an incredible job, right? She just grabbed a design. She said, Patrick, if you're gonna give this to me, I'm just grabbing something from there and I'm gonna use it, and yeah. did it flawlessly. So with that said, we have a ton of things in there. We can also house holidays any category pick a category we can add it which is really really cool a material library which is what i'm most excited about because obviously most people go to either the caesar north america app go to caesarna.com um, or anywhere else that you get our cut settings and stuff like that well we're going to actually add all of that right into the software so you'll find a product you snap uh you know click on it really quick and it's going to give you all of the different attributes of that material and everything that you see there, as well as give you cut settings and other things of that nature. That's gonna obviously help you to utilize that. But we did flood this with every single one of our materials in our library, so you'll never go um, you know, into the, the software, into the cutter, not knowing what you're supposed to do. So. Uh, and then we also have our basic cutter page. That's where we're going to register our machine. Uh, we have a convenient little my page where we can do your most recent files that you have. You get to pick a cute little picture. Mine's an elephant. I don't know why. I think when we did this, we just picked that for me. Uh, but then this is the best part about the whole thing is our design window. So a couple of things that we added on our design actual design page. And I want to explain the reason why. We do have, because we know there's going to be questions, an offline mode Okay, to this. So, this is a hybrid software, and what that means is that not only are there web components to it, like all of the updating of materials, the tutorial videos, and things like that, but we also have a physical download of the actual design page, and uh, all you really have to do, log into Wi-Fi maybe once a week, just to get all the recent updates. That's really all you have to do, and other than that, you're off to creating. But, as you can see, we've put a mat right on the screen. Uh, this is going to be for our craft friends that do prefer to design right on a mat. We also have the ability to click material roll and there's a very fine line grid on here that you can actually design to and customize. So if I want to make this any dimension, I have the ability to make that any dimension that I want and start designing towards uh, my artboard. Another thing that we added as a convenience for our print and cut friends, which we know there's going to be questions <laughs> about it, right? We actually have the custom page sizes that are already preloaded and we'll continue to load more page sizes. Or you have the ability to, again, go back to that material roll and make a custom page size. So if your printer can cut it, we can print and cut it. Like that's really what it comes, that's the simple answer, right? So with that said, um, another thing that we have is we have all your basic tools at the bottom, your select tool, your drag tool, your notes tool for our commercial friends, which are super important. A simple text feature, the, the window will pop up. Let me, sorry, I'm like sideways when I'm doing this. When I pop this up, I have all of my preloaded, and as you can see for all my creator friends that these are all downloaded fonts, it will give you a sample text of the font. I click on it and it changes my text in real time. Here's the best part though, and this is what I'm most excited about. When you use other softwares, a lot of times you bring in those custom fonts. 
it completes the letters, but it never welds it together for us. And so now we got to go back, highlight it, weld it, all that stuff. All you have to do right on the convenience of the screen is hit the auto weld button, hit OK, and your font and your text is going to come to the page already pre-welded. So now you don't have to shake so and move anything. It will around. also convert it to essentially like a curve. Exactly. And then, automatically, and then yep. weld it. Yep, yep. Automatically does all of that for you. So now you can cut basically right from that menu. Uh, let's see, what else do we got in here? We have some preloaded shapes as well, just to help with setting up the foundation for some designing. We also have your group, your ungroup, your you know uh, layering tools, meaning your bring to the front, bring to the back tools. If you're working on multiple uh, things at one time, all your alignment tools are right there, as well as things like your duplicate tool. So you can actually duplicate as many times as you want based on what you're designing to, which is I think is really convenient. Here's the best part. If I go from the design page and I want to navigate to another page and come back, my design saves right there on the design page until I'm ready to save it. So with that said, it's a really cool feature. Should we show maybe? Should I bring in some artwork and Yeah, absolutely. Show okay, all and right. People let's want to it. see that in action. So let's do this. Let's grab something, because this will also go into loading properly, because that's going to be, a right. we know, is a question. Right. So I'm going to go into design library, and let's pick something... I want to pick something semi-simple just for the sake of this so we're not sitting here. Here we go. This is fine. Trust the process. That's what we've been doing the last year. Just trust the process. <laughs> we're going to get it. We're going to get there. They say Da Vinci didn't complete something for 20, probably that for 20 true. years. That is true, for 20 years. That's somebody that definitely trusted the process for yep. sure. So if you ever want to know how he uh, made colors, you should, it's interesting. If you ever research that. So as you saw what I did, I just did something without even telling them that I did it. Uh, the artboard will automatically bring your art, you know, somewhere on the artboard itself. I can come here, hit the arrange tool, and I can do two things. I can center it to my board, or say I have a page up, or I just have a custom field up there. I can center it to whatever that layer is, uh, and then also too from here I can hit arrange, and I can hit move to cut origin. Now a lot of people, as I just click this button, are like, "Well, why is the cut origin there?" We'll explain that. We're gonna we're explain, gonna explain that. that. We're gonna so get there. we'll get there, but we're gonna also show you how to load your machine. Exactly. Now, from the actual design page, or the sending your design to the cutter, a couple of convenient tools that we did add, is not only if you have multiple colors within your design, uh, it'll separate all of your colors for you, but it'll also bring everything to that origin point so that you never have to guess on where that you know information is gonna go in accordance to your map. Another thing too is that we added the convenient button here that is uh, selecting your cutter settings. So not only can I send custom settings right from the software, I can just hit that, that use the cutter settings and whatever setting that I've placed in there, whether it's easy weed brick, name them all, or if I made a custom setting, it'll automatically override and let the cutter take over, mm -hmm. which is really convenient. Uh, we have a convenient mirroring tool. We have a, a weld box tool, which will throw a box around uh, your image, making weeding a little bit easier, especially if you're nesting and things of that nature. Um, and then also from this page, we do have our setup window. So like I explained to you earlier, we can make the decision whether we wanna go USB or we wanna connect to Wi-Fi. If I connect to the Wi-Fi, it's gonna take me directly through the process of how to connect properly through my local network. So uh, now that I'm plugged in here though, we're gonna go to USB, click it, and then now we're ready to go and start designing. All right, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna cut something? Uh, one other question, yeah, since yeah, we, we said for the settings here on the cutter, mm -hmm. can we change those same languages over here? So that's the kind of the next step for us, is being able to make the cutter talk appropriately with the software and the software talk appropriately okay. with the cutter so that when you do make custom settings, they'll travel back okay. and forth, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and I, I know that I have most of our software people, like our software team is on this and they're like, <laughs> don't give us more work. But I mean, it's, we're packing right. so much into this it, and, it's, it's, and it's incredible exactly. and that those are important. And these are all, again, yeah. this is just a, it's going to be a process that is mm -hmm. going to forever be evolving. Yeah. So again, this is something that is so brand new to us and we want to give you the most, the basic startup tools to get you going to be confident with the machine itself. Because mm -hmm. the machine is what's really going to be driving it yeah. for you anyway. So, well, and we've also already seen, uh, have seen this quite a bit from the folks that are that are in our tight circle. They're helping us doing some of this testing and making sure that buttons. Lily sent me like a laundry list of things that I needed to fix in the software the other day of just clerical errors that are totally my fault, right? I'm not a great, we know I'm not a good speller. So with that said, 
this software, the benefit of it for the end user, and the reason why we wanted to create this ecosystem is this is truly going to grow. We've already had a ton of uh, folks that have reached out to us and said, I like this function and I like that function. That's part of it. We've added it, yeah. right? We just yeah. said, we've added it, and, and we can forever grow and change this this software as we develop more and more. So those comments, these questions that everybody's know, asking, are super relevant. I, I, but I think the, the moments now, though, Diddy. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so let's stop. We, let's stop. People uh, really want to see this in action, um, and I think this is also going to be the uh, step, or um, I would say highlight the of the machine too, that really sets it apart from mo or any 12 inch cutter for the most part out there um, of not only, again, what I mentioned with the speed, precision, which you're, you're about to see, but I seen the question pop up, that's why it's on here, but loading with or without a mat, is yeah. that possible? Will you tell me, man, what do you want? <laughs> do you want to load with or without a mat? That's a question for everybody <laughs> out there right now. What do you want to use? Would you want to use a mat? Would you want to use a roll or a sheet on its own? Yeah. Uh, the answer is all are welcome. All are welcome. So you yeah. pick what you want to use. Um, if you have a sheet, you want to make sure you're using a mat, totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. If you have a full roll of Caesar product that you want to cut on the Juliet, that is also possible. Now. We are going to get into where we also need to stress this for people that already have 12 inch cutters and know how you load into those machines, how those machines cut, and how our cutter is different than those. So Pat, take that away. Let me do that. Let me, I'm gonna actually hop around this side and go to the front of the machine. Lots of people on TikTok wanna see it without a mat. So. Oh, without a mat, all right. If you wanna see it without, without a mat, see without let's, a mat. Know, let's give the people what they okay. want. So a couple of things we need to talk about really quick when loading our material. We've given you the convenience of a little guide strip right on the front door, which allows that starting point to be where basically when the head is in the home position where the blade is gonna start cutting, okay? With that said, you have three individual pinch rollers. Each of these pinch rollers, you can move by grabbing the front and the back, and you can make adjustments to them all over. Now, the reason I tell you that is because this is something, again, bringing the commercial world to the craft world and something that even internally, right, we have to get used to, is that there are actual specific points of your bottom roller that are basically milled out to grip underneath that, that pinch roller, grip your material. We just have to make sure that our pinch rollers are within those, those points, but uh, know also that you can cut outside of your pinch roller. Right. So no longer is it auto load and it only within this specific, right you know, centering point. Now we have full freedom. So let's load up a quick piece of material. But I guess like for those that may yeah. be questioning, so from this pinch roller to this print pinch roller, you have what in dimension? Uh, from like this pinch roller to this pinch yeah. roller, I think it's 12, so like 12.25. About 12.25, yeah. okay. So roughly on that, but here is the benefit and why it was made mm -hmm. the way it is with yeah. the housing inside the yeah. machine, allowing you to utilize up to roughly... Uh, roughly 13.5 inches. 13.5 so, inches. And, and we can, and, and realistically, I'll say this, it's about 13.75. Okay. We say 13.5 because I don't want you guys to call and yell at me and say, hey, I aired out my machine all the way to one side because I try to go too far. Yeah. As you can see, I have a 12 inch piece of material right here. I'm on the guide strip and I still have a ton of space that I can cut on this side. Again, giving you that freedom to pick right. and choose. So. The proper way that we need to show people to load this. Very well. important, yeah. everyone yes. paying attention. Take your main, your main lever in the back, you're gonna put it down, which opens up your pinch wheels. You're gonna go ahead and put your material inside the machine. Now, again, we gave you a guide strip to make this process super simple. Once your material is loaded into your machine, I'm gonna raise that back pinch lever, which will clamp my material down and then I can advance my material back and forth on this lower portion of the machine. But, origin point, we need to origin talk about point. this. Most people are used to top right, most people are used to bottom left, most people are used to bottom right. We are going to set the origin starting in the bottom left hand corner and then it will advance to the, we'll say the upper right hand or left hand corner wherever your image is done. And we'll, we'll demo that right now. So we need to make sure that we're using the directional arrows to bring our material all the way to the uh, to the corner. 
um, of our machine, or I mean, I'm sorry, of our where our blade sits so that we can start this process. Now I'm gonna go in the middle here just to check because I think that we even need to check ourselves sometimes with cut settings. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go into my cut settings menu. Actually, you know what, let's just do it this way. Bring my material all the way there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I got my speed and my force in here. I just can't remember if I purposely manipulated <laughs> it to stop this so we could show it, well, we'll but we'll see. see. We'll see. Uh, and my speed, I just wanna make sure that we're on the same page. All of our presets, the speed is basically 10, which is not the full speed right. that this machine can go, so it's super quick. So again, let's actually, you know what, you do it. You hit the test cut button. Am I hitting it? Hit it, right there. All right, right here. So, can't hear it. Did it go? No, not yet. I was going to say, is it sharing Wait, not <laughs> oh, until yeah. it's actually running. Like, let's, <laughs> let's savor that one. So now what I can go ahead and do is I can check, make sure that my cut setting uh, peels perfectly. And then now you see we added, because we're Caesar. It's a little it's mini tee. It's got to be the mini It's tea, a little right? mini tee, right? Everybody loves the mini tees that show, so we gave <laughs> it to you right there. Now, if my cut setting was way off for whatever reason, all I have to do is come into my uh, my menu hit the speed or the, I'm sorry, the force up a couple notches or wherever I'm comfortable, do another test cut until you get that accurate. This is going to start to teach you how to properly advance your blade because our standard cut settings work with that thickness of a credit card. That's how right, we made right. sure we left that margin of error in there. If you're it. noticing that you have to go all the way up mm -hmm. on the force for some of your settings, yeah. it's still not cutting right. That may be a great indicator for you to go, I need to advance my blade out a little bit more, or I need to change my blade. Yeah. So those are kind of things where you should never have to be all the way up on your force in any, any setting. Um, I do want, I mean, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead on your part no, of this here, but you saw that Pat did also load it from the front. Yes. Now, you do have that same capability of loading your material from the back of the machine yep. and setting it right to where you need to cut. Now, I need to stress, because we are going matless since that's what people wanted to see, but when you have a mat, what Pat is showing you right now is exactly the same thing you would do. So with a mat, it isn't like you set your mat in there and leave it here and it cuts out this way. It's actually going to do the same thing where when you, if you feed it from the front you have to you advance, have to advance it all the way to the back and there will be indicators for zero zero um to where at the bottom left of the mat the black mat does oh it does it should have the zero zero yeah. there for you yeah okay so on the mats they will have the zero zero mark down at the bottom left of the mat so this is the indicator. So when you set your material on the mat, you're not gonna set it up at the top. If you only have a little piece, you don't want it up there because again, it's gonna cut out. So you wanna make sure you set it up at the bottom left where the zero zeros will be on the mat if you're using one. Um, and it's gonna cut, you're gonna see how it cuts. It cuts forward. Yep. So let's go ahead and why don't we send a cut to it? Absolutely. Let's see. I mean, we're talking so, about it so much. Okay, so we have everything set though. Yeah. When you did that though, Pat, like, did you have to hit the origin button for that to go back to that, or did you just set Correct. your base? So that's something that's super important. Actually, grab me that mat and let's talk about it really quick because I think that that's really important. And we even had a discussion about this yesterday. Grab me a leader. Oh, yeah. So again, like Joe explained. Your, I think we're, we're John Matt, really, we're sports announcer. We know sports. 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 All right, so with that, your blade will start in the bottom left corner of your cut. So here's what we need to make sure, that if my blade is here at zero, zero, that is where my blade is gonna start. If my blade, I, I advance the material and bring the mat halfway through, and then my blade is resting here, that's considered bottom left. That's gonna be where the blade starts. The blade will always start where the blade is positioned. So if you are trying to utilize the full width of your machine and the full length of your material, make sure to hit that home button, let the head go back, put it with the guide, you know, line it up with the guide, and let the rest of the process right. just be magical. So, I, and, and again, we'll have more video content on exactly. that exactly this this positioning and things like that, but I think it's important that we say. It, it, and we definitely want to make sure that those, again, that are familiar with other 12-inch cutters, that all kind of cut the same way this is different but this gives you the actual prosumer experience because if you start dabbling in larger vinyl cutters out there they all cut the way that our machine cuts so um this is that's my test cut sorry 
What happened? No, I just went oh. a little bit past the test cut, so I didn't cut over it. So now Pat just kind of moved it a little bit and then just left it. That is where our base point is going to be, if that's what we're telling our machine. And we, and we so, can do, we'll do this twice. Yeah. We'll do, I'll keep it in the origin, as you can see on the software, for the folks that can see. I have my cut in the origin point on my mat. Let's show it once cutting this way, and then let's just move the blade somewhere else. And exactly. then that, hopefully that explains what we're talking about. So I'm going to send a cutter. Once I hit it, it does give me an indicator, hey, the tool that you're using is a blade, right? I know that, that the T word is going to be a trigger word for a lot of people oh, yeah. with tools. We'll talk about that, but for now we're using a standard 45 degree Caesar blade. So hit yes, and then let the rest do its work. All right, now, do you guys I'll notice anything? The noise. <laughs> you know, we can kind of talk. We can talk. Hear, hear we each can other. actually say words to but, each other. But we don't need to shout. Oh, no, we don't need to shout. We don't need so to shout. We can whisper. We can, we can have a decent conversation. Decent, yeah. For those, for those on TikTok, the microphone is right by the cutter. Oh, yeah. So that yeah, that is true. The sound so with it. that, yeah. That is true. I forgot. That, there yeah. is a mic back here for the TikTok followers. But that's great to watch later, because if it's even that well, quiet I, right off the thing, I, I'm, I'm good with curious. that. Yeah, people are saying it's quiet in the comments. Yeah, so. I mean, I, that's, that's what we want you to actually see or hear that Yeah. Uh, firsthand. Oh, I see. I need a heat press so I can heat up my material now. I'm, now I do the heat press. Yeah. <laughs> So there we go. if you want to see, we'll try to get the cameras in. Sorry for everybody. Yeah. This is tough. We're running three cameras. Thank you, Trev and Chloe. You guys are crushing it. There we go. Um, but we yeah, want you guys to see that stuff. fine detail, fast paced. Mm -hmm. And we should have timed that, but we can always look back we'll at how quickly later. that was. Yep. Um, but just to show you guys how quickly, quiet, uh, mm -hmm. and the precision on that. Um, yep. So let me do this. Let me move the head over. And then why don't you, why don't we just hit send a cut? Sorry, Chloe. Squeeze over here. And you know what? Just for the convenience. For the convenience, you're going to make it a little smaller. Oh, now, shoot. he is going, let's say, 75% or is that like 60%? Probably 60%. Size? 60% of the size you just cut there. So as you can see now, the reason why we talk about that, of bringing your cutter head home, is that we started with the, the cutter blade in the middle of the material. I am in the origin point, the lower left-hand corner on my mat, but that, wherever this blade lies, that's going to be what you considered your origin point. Exactly. So, so you have the freedom. Still cutting the same. It's still cutting from left up. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing to remember. So if you know if you're running low on the material back here, you don't want to cut that because it's going to just kind of spit the material out. But as you can see, He's at 60% of what he just cut there, maybe even less. Look at that fine detail. This is easy weed, folks. Nothing super special. It's, well, it is, well, it's bubblegum easy weed. Let's have that some respect. Is. The lady who names him is literally in the room, so let's. Uh, it's bubblegum. I'm just saying it's not moving magic. We're going live, all right? We're just showing you the precision, the fine detail, the little cuts that we were able to get um, and still have the speed of an industrial size cutter mm -hmm. anyways and then what we'll do let's why don't we send this home send that head home send that take home. this material out okay which you can just hit the down button advance your material out but you gotta remember your, that that your um pinch wheels are still down yeah yep so correct, when you do correct. that so again with the mat same exact thing i'm gonna go ahead and lower the lever down in the back feed my mat through and line it up with my guide strips. Are we beating this mat up? This is a beat up. This man. is the one. This is uh you can tell there's a lot of video. Yeah. Cuts. We've been doing a lot of videos, you guys. <laughs> a lot so, of video cuts. Uh, we're trying to salvage yeah. the one mat we have. That's alright though. So with that said, my head is in the home position. I've loaded my mat according to my guide strip, and if you notice this, that blade starts right along the edge of that mat. And that's by design to make sure that as soon as this starts, what you'll notice is that your head will tap the material and it'll actually advance about a centimeter in and a centimeter up to eliminate that margin of error for you. So don't worry about if you set your material edge to edge and place your material on your mat like this, advance it to the back, uh, it, we still have that margin of error built in for you so that you won't have a, a misaligned cut or you have something messed right. up. But I can, again, throw my mat all the way out while it's in there. 
All right, Diddy. We did a super thin product, super detailed, oh, 90 wow. micron product. Let's let's pull out the big guns for All the right. doubters out there, right? <laughs> let's go brick. Okay, brick we got the brand new. We might as well plug it too. These brand new fluorescent brick 600 colors. The logo. Oh, there you go. There it is. <laughs> brand new fluorescent brick 600 colors. Uh, I think we have how many? Five, six. Uh, I think there's five total. Five. Yeah. All together. I'm putting everybody on the spot right now. Yep. Um, but yeah, so in case those that are on any of these platforms do not know what Brick 600 is, it is our thickest material that we have out there. Gives off awesome dimension. We have some examples back here. Now, those that have experienced it, especially on smaller cutters, might run into some issues trying to cut it. If they sometimes can't find fine detail out of it. Um, so I'm sorry to put you on the uh, on the spot here, Pat. Willing, live, but I'm willing and able. Why don't you load it from the back okay, while I'm setting up the blade? Point. So I'll explain to him the blade. Okay. So with that said, remember before we had a 45 degree blade in here. Now, are we going to allow our 60 degree blade to advance as far as our 45 degree? Maybe, maybe not. So this is the only time that you really need to make sure that you're paying attention to your blade housing. Or what I always recommend, you hop in to the sort. Grab yourself two of them. Now you have one designated for 45, 45. one designated yeah. for 60 degree. Yeah. So again, I'm gonna push that push pin up, take my blade out. This is a 45 degree blade we we're using. Make it's sure indicated you with put a red that cap. somewhere safe. Yeah, they instead can, of my pocket. They can fall off the table pretty easily, get lost, well, and make sure you're careful with them. Well, in the last show, I didn't realize I threw some of the extra blades in my backpack and went through TSA. So don't uh, do that either. Don't do that either. It's not either. a good idea. But they are indicated in the pack. When you get the pack, you'll have two 45 degree. Uh, the 45 degree does have a red cap. The 60 degree does have a blue cap, just to make right. it a little bit more simplistic. So again, I'm going to loosen that golden locking nut. I'm going to adjust my blade where I think I need to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten that locking nut again so that we can get it into our machine. So I know it's probably impossible for you guys to see that on camera. Yeah. The blade is probably advanced a little bit more than what I showed you in the beginning. Correct. This again is a very thick product so you might need to kind of feel it out for yourself mm -hmm. on how far out that blade needs to go. Exactly. But as for the settings we're going to and use. And for whatever reason too, if my setting here, like we're going to test the brick, uh, where is the Brick 600, 600, load that up. Right now I'm gonna test it out on this. If for whatever reason we get a bad test cut, the benefit is of, of having the freedom to change is we'll make the adjustments and show you how to make adjustments as we go. We'll hit exactly. the boop button, let that thing do its thing and cut. And then we'll go ahead and take it out. Brick, I go hands. Do you go hands? I go to get handsy with the brick. Dang, even with it's like I know the guy that set up these cut settings. <laughs> so <laughs> as you just saw there, um, I, have, I have no words, all right? <laughs> because I know how many times I've tried to cut brick first time, yeah. and uh, it's pretty painful. Yeah. Now, be careful, right? Yeah, because sometimes it can yeah. be deceiving. You could have cut all the way through. Right. So you can always do the push. I always say the push test. Like yeah. If you push on that and it doesn't cut through that backing, I think you got it right yeah. on the mark. Well, and also, too, so. one of the big reasons why we made the test cut as defined as we did, meaning that we didn't put just a traditional like triangle and a circle and a square. We wanted something with depth, dimension, and also detail. And the reason being is that with whether you're using a 45 or a 60 degree blade, if you can get this kind of detail out of a you know two centimeter or three centimeter by three centimeter test cut, right. your everything else is going to be flawless. So, All right. Well, let's there's go. nothing left but to take this for a spin right now. It. Okay. So, our settings again. We didn't have to adjust them right here in the interface. We're using the Brick 600 t uh, settings, 60 degree blade. Are we cutting the same thing? Yeah, I'm just gonna go like two and a half inches let's wide. Let's go two and right? a half inches wide. We want to respect the material. Absolutely. The, the cutter will literally destroy the material if we <laughs> wanted it to, right? So let's let's. All right, so let's go ahead and so, hit cut on that. Again, using the cutter settings that we just had uh, preloaded into the machine. Silence is golden. <laughs> Sound of silence. Oh, I can't see. I can't do any copyrighted oh, no, songs. No, no, no. I, yeah, I didn't yeah. screw it up. I didn't. I didn't get too many notes in. I didn't get too many notes in. It's not recognizable. Yeah, exactly. Are you saying I'm a bad singer? Is that what uh, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. I get it. <laughs>
All right, All let's right. double check. So, look at that. Oh boy. And for those that haven't used brick, it isn't a sticky backing. So again, oh, yeah. if your cut isn't good and it comes off, then it doesn't lay back down. It's not that it's ruined, but to get fine detail and have it all, I mean, look at those cavities. Come on guys, can we go in close on those once he's done? This is on the tip, that's, yeah, that's on the tip of the weeder. This is cavities on brick 600. Cavity central, should we say. Fine saying. detail. Call the dentist, because we Call got cavities. Call the dentist, because we have cavities. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Are we thinking of key, like little key catchphrases now? <laughs> You've been saying them all week, so that one might be a new one. Yeah, there you go. Cool. So that's just to show you it, the difference in Caesar products uh, of the range uh, that that you can cut with the same amount of detail, mm -hmm. same amount of setup, uh, using mat or matless. Again, your option. I know I've seen some people staring back over here. This is a roll feeder, um, which should be available in the near future. Now, this is if you are using a larger roll of material, like we have loaded up here. If you are getting into larger quantities of HTV and Easy PSV, um, that is going to be how you're going to set that up from the, yep. the other side. Um, but what else are we doing? What do you want to do? Well, the one that has. What do they want us to do? Well, I was going to say, this is. We got to go into the print cut stuff. Because, right. first right. off, I know a lot of people have been asking me. I've been seeing a lot of direct messages of me asking. Because, in case those that haven't been paying attention the last few months, we launched our game changer product called Easy Color DTV, which is direct to vinyl. Um, it is the heat transfer vinyl we made that works with your inkjet home desktop printer. Now, um, people are getting familiarized with the idea of print and cut. Uh, I know we say print and cut and people think that this machine has the capacity to actually do the printing. This is not a printer. Yeah. This can communicate with registration marks, which is what, why we refer to it as print and yeah. cut yeah. is because it is being printed and now it can read those marks to be able to cut that print um, so now for those that have already used the easy color you've used it in the software as you're using at home uh, you're probably like well does does Leonardo D design studio do the same thing right. absolutely we're and not pass. wasters we're not yeah, wasters, we're not wasters. Space. we don't waste space <laughs> we don't do that stuff so let's explain some of that because what they'll see in this this version is my special version there of the software, go. right? So, special version. And unfortunately for me is that your guys' version will be even cooler even than what cooler. I have. So we'll explain what the print and cuts, what the print and cut screens will do. We'll send a job. I think it's important yep. to show the precision of the print and cut. And also, if for whatever reason, after I tried to break this machine yesterday, if it's off, we're gonna show them how to fix it. We're gonna show you. We'll show you how to fix it, but we'll have other video content down the road with that. But let's bring in a file really quick here, sorry. Uh, will you actually do me a favor, that bag right there has the DTV in it. Absolutely. Just move it into the printer. So when I want to bring a file in, I'm going to hit File, Import. Now we're setting up for a print and cut job. Actually, I should explain this two different ways. Number one, I can, I can execute a print and cut on my mat, and I can also bring in a series of paper sizes. So we'll have some uh, mats that are preloaded into our uh, software, which will have uh, 12 by 12, 12 by 24, because that's what we have. For folks that are cutting smaller things, a four and a half by six mat. And then we'll also, for some of our older materials that are still 15 inches wide, we'll have a 12 by 15 inch mat that you can work towards. Right. Again, the smaller mat and then the 12 by 15 will not be sold. We'll have the 12 by 12 and the 12 by 24 available, but we want to give them the convenience. If you have a mat from another one of the other companies, right? then you can feel free to utilize that in the Juliet, okay? We don't want people to have to go out. And we want them to buy our mats and all our stuff, but we don't want to tell them that's all you can use, right? This is, we're creating, this is freedom to create. Exactly. So I can bring a preloaded sheet up. Right here is actually A4 size paper. Um, I also can bring in a US letter size if I'd like. And really the margin of the paper, you'll see the boundaries are based on your printer settings. So no longer are we stuck to a specific box 
dialog box that'll do print and cut or registration marks that are way off the page and way out of the way out of an outer space right you will be able to bring your registration marks all the way up on your page you'll be able to make a custom page size if your printer we know we got a lot of converted printer folks in the group so if you have a converted printer that's 16 by 19 i can build a page to that my registration marks as we'll see on this next step will actually form to my image and then I also will have the option in their version, which I'm super jealous of because we talked about it this morning, <laughs> you'll actually be able to bring in just page margins. So you can just snap margin, you can just snap your registration marks to the page and then work within the page and, and be able to build. So let me bring a file in and we'll explain the screens. I'm going to bring in my favorite file of the world. The and you know the pumpkin's too easy. Let's give a challenge. Should we go challenge? Let's go challenge. Let's do that create logo. Um there it is. Okay, so when I bring in a file, it's going to determine whether it's a print and cut file or a cut only. File types we can bring in right now are your PNG, JPEG, uh, SVG, and a TIFF file. Uh, pretty soon, we will also be able to bring in a slew of other file types, and then everybody asked, you know, there will be another versions of the software too and updates down the road that we'll be able to bring in other file types, which will be fun. So with that, I have my print and cut set up. I'm gonna to go to my next screen, which will automatically remove my background for me and draw to the, the forefront my image and are my colors of my image. From this screen, what you're gonna be able to do is select your mask tolerance, which is just how close can we get to the colors and the actual border of all of our uh, vectored images in our design. And then I'll be able to actually select from a color range too. So I can go ahead and remove this orange if I want. I think it's an orange color. Or yellow I mean I don't tangerine know if, tangerine it's a tangerine or I can remove the green I also have the freedom to hit uh, the eyedropper and find colors within the background so say I want to add the background back now I can right from the convenience of the software so again we'll remove that background uh, remove that and then we're gonna also include those colors back because I don't want just half a word oops wrong color sorry and then remove perfect and then what I'll also be able to do is on this next page, because it happens kind of quickly, we have to explain it ahead of time, you'll see in live, in real time, it scanned my image and then it snaps that cut line automatically around it. So I hit next, scans my image, and now my cut line's there. Done. Next screen that I can go into is going to be for my sticker makers, my contour cutting people, my folks that like to add the bleed. This is a fun screen. We actually added a live contour offset feature. So in real time, I can move this and create my cut contour right from the convenience of this page, okay? I also have the ability, if I'm gonna put a high contour on here so you can see, I can add a contour bleed. Now the benefit to this is, is if it's one structured color around obviously the image, it's gonna pick that image up. But if I wanna make a custom bleed color, I can actually drop down the color menu, full CMYK, uh, CMYK library we've given you access to, or I can select a particular color within the image using the eyedropper and make that my bleed if I want. Really, really cool, really simple. So let's take a bleed off and we're gonna take that contour all the way down to the edge because people don't care about the contour. No. If, if you're talking about precision, you better hit that. Well, they're gonna to wanna to see precision you're, that, so you better show them precision. how good it is. <laughs> all right, so with that said, now my artwork with my registration marks already snapped. Again, on uh, the uh, literally the, the published version that we'll have out, you'll be able to manipulate your, uh, your registration marks and bring them real close and tight to that image boundary uh, so we can really utilize the whole space of the page and really the whole cutter space being that our printer can, can accompany that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, uh, I will select on my image, I'm gonna find my rotate button, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this and then I'm gonna organize it to my page. Now, the cool part about what I showed you earlier with the center to page, as well as um, the move to cut origin, is if I am working on a print and cut and I wanna make sure that my image is right in the middle of that page so that I don't have any issues, I can go up and hit arrange, hit center to page, and it's automatically gonna center my image. Okay, so we're just gonna do a quick cut here, make it really simple on everybody. Once I'm done with this step, I'm ready to go ahead and send this over to the design page, or the uh, send to design page, which once I hit send design, the menu is gonna pop up, two things happen, which are really cool. Oops, I have a mirror on still. Okay, 
two things that are going to happen that are really cool. Number one, it's going to separate my printed artwork and then separate my cutting contour. So now, once I send this to the printer, printer, once that data is done loading, I can start getting into my cutting and I can start setting up my cutter for that next step. So let's go ahead and find our printer. It's already connected. We're good. Send a printer. We got DTV. In so there. we have the DTV cool. Easy Color set up in here again. For those that don't know what Easy Color is, it is a heat transfer vinyl that can be printed directly onto your desktop home printer. So uh, I'm just trying to knock out a couple different yeah. uh, opportunities yeah. to explain. Um, this is a heat transfer vinyl though. It isn't a paper transfer. So this is, you're gonna see how it gets cut. And, and I kept standard, I kept standard margin that was on there. So like yeah. US letter well, standard too. is yeah, like an sure. in, inch, half inch or whatever. Yeah. I didn't do any of the, the margin or the registration mark manipulation just because I'm trying to show you precision. Exactly. We got the whole page. We can use that. So let We're me go here. We're going to do a here. detailed cut on Trev, it too. You're Trev's see running it. double duty right double now. Double duty. <laughs> um, I hope everyone is still hanging on and watching with us. Uh, this is a big topic so here though. So. And then what we're going to actually do is I think we're going to keep. So because we talked about uh, the 60 degree blade being that high precision blade, Are we I think that? we should show it with the 60 degree to show how tight we can get to that edge. Okay. Alrighty. And again, with that said, even if I have a print and cut job, um, if I leave myself a little room for error actually on the page like I have, I now have some space that I can go ahead and do a test cut anywhere on this page. Uh, and with that said, I think Cortez, which did an awesome job in his video, Absolutely. actually has an easy color DTV preset for us already. So that's right. pretty cool. So we'll utilize that. Let me load that one up and see. All right, so I'm gonna line my material up properly. Oops. Yeah, that might not be accurate. <laughs> that's okay. okay. That's, I'm actually kind of hoping it's not so that we can show them how to adjust it too. So. All right, so now I have all this this open space on my page. I know we're being wasteful. I'm sorry, guys, but we want to. You show can always nest this. it however you <laughs> yeah, like yeah. and utilize. I just want to show. Page. I just want to show this process to folks yes. just so they can see it. So we're gonna use. We're gonna test Cortez's knowledge here. Okay. We're gonna use his preset of force of 14 and then a speed of 11. I'm gonna hit that test cut button. It'll cut directly into my DTV. Do not test cut on your printed area. <laughs> no, do not do that. So I'll go ahead and remove okay. that. Okay. All right. Well, close but no cigar. Let's see if it popped through. Did pop through. Are we using 60 or This 40 is 60 cut? degrees. So we're still 60, so. 60, yeah. So why don't we go up maybe to 16, we'll say. Okay. Just for, just for funsies. And again, even these preloaded cut settings, being that it is a commercial style and we have the ability to change them in real time, remember too that you do have the freedom and the ability um, to go ahead and make adjustments. So you don't have to worry about if, if for whatever reason that cut setting isn't perfect for you every single time. It's just, you make the adjustment as, go, as you go. So now that we're ready, we're pretty comfortable with that. Okay. I'm gonna actually save this just because. And, then, and again, that could have been the difference of the way Pat's blade was correct. out versus how it was set originally. Correct. Blades were totally different. Exactly, so I'm gonna show this because it's a little harder with the head. I'm gonna take this blade itself and I'm gonna actually put it just inside this registration mark. And we've given you the convenience of a little carrot on there. Maya calls it her carrot. So the carrot, the carrot uh, to show you what registration mark to start on. So I'm gonna put that blade just inside uh, so that the live camera will actually pick up that registration mark. Wait, did you uh, say that again though? The Danny? live camera. The live camera. So did you want an optical eye or do you want a live camera? Because I like a live Can camera. Can you tell them the difference? Uh, can you tell them the difference? We have a live <laughs> camera in Juliet. The precision when reading the registration right. marks is, I don't, I mean, we'll show I don't want to, yeah. We'll, but we'll also explain them. this part of the process of that when you see it registering your registration mark, okay? we did open up the field of view of the camera. So it does show a wider field of view to make sure that we're trying to hit that registration mark uh, right on right on the money. So let's go ahead. We got our stuff loaded in there. We're good. Let me throw this cut through. Sorry, get out of your guys' way. And actually, I'll let you guys come over on this side because what will take place is all gonna be right here. All right, let's go ahead and send. Are we doing this? I think we're, I think we're doing, we doing this. this. All right. You guys so, all ready out there? 
Trev, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> We're ready Just to go. Me, well, maybe one second. All right, okay. we're going. This is the print and cut experience of reading the registration marks with the live camera that's inside the Juliet cutter. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Are we now good? We're going Let me just double for check. It. Make sure. Let's double I'm check. On. I'm on. We're Make good. sure your blade is inside cool. that bottom left. All right. So what you'll see in real time is that the actual camera itself will scan the image, and then it'll once it registers that print and cut mark. Oh, I, put, I might have put the speed just a little low. Maybe the speed is really Well, that's why low. it's moving so slow. <laughs> well, okay. we got to wait till it registers. Yeah, so we can change it. So the speed, I didn't turn the speed up. I'm sorry, this, guys. This is a little bit of an option. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pat had a lot of time to kill that day. Um, this also gives you the option for yeah. those that need the fine cuts. Correct. Speed actually does work against you. So yeah. if you have very, very detailed stuff, and you have a thin material like the easy color, it will, uh, it could have a problem cutting. Let's go. So slower size. the speed could be better, but we're gonna, let's there up that go. speed. Then up that, oh, give me one second. All right, it'll start picking up in a second here. There we go. All right, so now we're, now we're <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that because I was playing around with it while I was playing with those settings and I, um, uh, it's whatever. It's okay. Just reminds me of Tom. So many Tommy Boy references that you and I can do when we talk and we do stuff together all the time. It's ridiculous. All right. All right. So again, I hope everyone's audio is clear at home. Audio is clear. Maybe we could hear that on. Yeah. You can, yeah. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'll take this off, and then let me test. We're good. Good. We're good. I see it. I always everywhere. like to test that. Now you can see the precision without even adding a bleed on top of it, people. Yeah. That's solid. I mean, you see a small, the pink line is the on. Pink there. line. Probably slightly. I should have put the pink That's line right. on there for the roll. The, Maybe for, for the Roland I was using. I was putting a thing, but yeah, you can see right there how precise that is. I mean, it's pretty spot on. So, and again. Part of that all goes into having that live camera feed, being able to see your cut in real time, uh, being able to see it register your registration marks in real time. Exactly. Super key and important with this thing. And it's, it's a really, really fun additive that we have in here. Which again, like we'll go into further detail down the line, but there's ways of figuring out how to calibrate it even yep. more to, to your cutter, because your cutter may be slightly off after all that usage you had over time. Um, and where you may need to dial it down. So there's more in-depth things that we can go about the, the benefits of the, the camera itself, how soon. to set up all this is gonna be coming soon. soon. I know we're already running uh, over an hour now on, oh, this, on hour. these lives. So I, uh, I definitely don't wanna tie up anyone's time anymore. I just wanted to give you guys a it's pretty much start to finish. Yeah, I, think I mean, we, we did. We did your basic cover. cuts. We did a super thick cut detail. Yeah. We did print and cut. Print and I mean, cut, went through the software, what's going to be available yeah. with the software. Obviously, the highlights of this vinyl cutter, yeah. um, we cannot stress enough going on the speed, the precision, the, uh, the amount of whether or not you want to cut sheets or rolls, large material. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pat, I know this may have been an answered question. I'm just going to say it because I don't know how many 12 inch cutters, but like what's the furthest you cut or how much yes. material have you cut yes. through the Juliet? So, so we, this machine itself will cut 10 plus yards, 10, 10 plus, plus yards. yards with perfect tracking. And that is, that is cutting. That's so, cutting. Like, yeah. I physically have actually just hit the button down. And well, rewound a full 50 yard around this thing. So running 50 yards, which this is probably like 20 yards yeah. on this roll here, but running yeah. 50 yards and allowing that to track yeah. all the way through. Now when you cut it, it's a different story, right. but being able to cut 10 plus yeah. yards. And here's the reason why we say 10 plus, right? Is because I don't want anybody right out of the box trying to cut 20 yards at time. If you want well, to right. do it, right. however, within reason of your production within keep reason. in mind that you spend your hard-earned money on your material so if you don't have 10 plus yards to cut on
keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, and don't just go buy a 50 yard roll and try to cut 50 yards straight because then you're wasting. But, Unless but you're producing. You guys got to get comfortable exactly. with it. Again, exactly. I don't know. I know there's a bunch of awesome people still hanging out with us now. So thank you all so much. But the levels of your confidence yeah. when it comes to a vinyl cutter, first off, the vinyl cutter you currently may have and how this differs from that. That's kind of the points we wanted to get, go over. And also for people that are still curious about getting a vinyl cutter and where that can become a, a part of your business. If you're not just a crafter and you do it for fun, you actually want to start your own business. And obviously time is money. So the big thing here was showing you how fast you can get jobs done. We didn't even really do a time study. Uh, those will probably be contents to show you how quickly from the time of uh, uh, print. I did. Uh, did it? What was it? Do you want me to say it? So from, let's say we do the easy no color. No software loaded on the No screen. software from print to, to cut. So from no software loaded, loading the software, bringing in my image, setting it up through those screens that we showed for print and cut, executing the print, then cut, minute 45 seconds. I minute in 45 seconds. Yeah. Then you throw in an application, then you throw which an will application. probably be like two minutes. Right. 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 Let's yep. say two minutes for yep. a job. Or if you have my e-press at home, about 15, 16 minutes, let that thing just heat up. It's an old one. You get it's a better one. Yeah. I gotta get a better one. But to do, <laughs> like, yeah. let's get this Create logo again. Again, Yeah. like, just to show you the availability of doing, how many we got on here? Six colors, mm -hmm. all done in one transfer. To be able to do that in two minutes, yeah. apply to a shirt. Again, this is for people that are thinking about business down the line. That could knock out quite a bit mm -hmm. in a day's, day's job. So. Yeah. Um, so I think the most important thing, I see questions loading in, and a lot of people are asking about availability, price, all of the good stuff. I think we should probably, it's time to reveal yeah, officially. I think, uh, yeah, I think we're still all winding all down. Is. So, yeah. um, all right. So we are proud to announce October 16 of 2022. Not 2037. Not 2037. 20, 2022. <laughs> they, the Juliet... Uh, cutter will be available at michael's stores mm -hmm. so these will be the first platform that the julia cutter will be available our authorized distributors and resellers will have them available yes. on cyber monday yes. which is november 28th of 2022 which happens to be the, what's that the Monday after the Black Monday. Friday, is that right? Uh, yes. Or is Black Friday yeah. Friday? Okay. Yeah. I just so, got to think in my brain. It's like Thanksgiving, Black, Black Friday, and then the Monday is Cyber Monday, and that is when yes. our authorized distributors and resellers will have it. That's here in the States. Yeah. That's who I'm talking to for that. Yes. But yes, it will be first out soon. Yes. I mean, it's the 7th today. So very soon, the Juliet is going to be in Michael's stores mm -hmm. on the 16th. So that's where you can get it. Um, what was the other part? Uh, price. We should probably talk about price. I'm let Diddy say the price. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for the Juliet, you will find it for $4.99. Um, and we will talk about the next price at a later date when we talk about the obviously her counterpart. So we're not <laughs> going to say that now. We're not going to say that now. For the time but we do want to just explain for those that may know the difference of other 12 inch cutter prices. Yeah. These highlights that we talked about today are the things that are going to be worth 100%, that cost. 100%. It, because it's nothing that could be done otherwise. You know what I mean? So if you factor in, again, if you're making this a business, if you're turning it into something, you're gonna make that on the back end quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just the ease of use, everything that comes with it, making it worth that. Cost. Well, and the best part about this whole thing is that once we launch, the benefit to you as the end user, we should probably let them know, this is your design software. This is your machine. This is your equipment. You give us the feedback of what you want. And like we've done uh, as folks are in the group and, and commenting right now can attest to this, you say you want something, we're going to try to give it to you in, in the quickest way that we can. So we want feedback. Right. All, all the good, bad, and right. indifferent feedback is positive for us right. because it allows us to continue to grow this uh, ecosystem build our groups together, build our business together, and ultimately add and provide um, you know, the industry overall with, with a central place where you can come to find everything. So if you aren't following on these platforms, yeah. you and TikTok, 
Make sure you're hitting that follow button. Mm -hmm. You on Facebook and YouTube, make sure you're hitting that follow somewhere. and subscribe button somewhere. You on Instagram, make sure you're following us because outside of what we've been talking about mostly, which has been the easy color in the last couple of months, we are going to be showing this vinyl cutter in basically all of our content going forward. So we really want to make sure that if you have specific questions, you want to see things for us to show you, we're going to really start um, compiling our content to have ready for you to make sure we go into fine detail on specific things regarding the Juliet as yeah. well as the Leonardo software. We have great groups. I know specifically on Facebook, if you're not in there, it's the Caesar, uh, Caesar North America support group. That is where you really got a great platform to ask questions. And we have so many wonderful people that are helpers of yes. ours that have their own pages and uh, they will, they are also people that we trust to be able to answer some of the questions. So please, uh, we, we have a lot of people in the comments answering questions as we go along, I know that. Uh, but in that group, you have a great platform to be able to get your questions answered as yep. well. Yep. So um, what does everyone think? We're gonna wrap this up here. I know everyone's ready to go, but we wanna hear, so please, in the comments, if you're all still watching, type in, we love Juliet. Um, I want to see comments cruising in. I just pulled that one out there, but. Somebody said to me, stop eating. I, I might've taken a bite of the heart. Did you, are you eating? I was, yeah. Somebody said stop. So, all right, we gotta go. We really okay, gotta go. Obviously. We okay, so type in, we love Juliet in the comments that you're at. Everybody that participated, sure again, hashtag. thank you all so much. I hope this video helped clear up those questions. Uh, please on YouTube stop giving us hate comments on videos that we're trying to make you love the Juliet right now you know about the Juliet so go and go oh I know more than I did two weeks ago there we go so Perfect. three weeks ago it was three <laughs> weeks already did all right I gotta get out of here you guys all have a wonderful weekend we're gonna talk to you very soon huge shout out to the team here at Caesar that helped yeah. out along this way I've seen everybody in the comments so great yes, work all around thank you. thank you guys Guys, Chloe, Trev, you guys yeah, rock. Huge shout out to huge people shout out. Back, by Yes, way. yes, yeah, thank oh, you. And then really quick too, I didn't get a chance to do this. You guys got to do it in Italy, but thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone on our team internally, externally that's been involved in this process. This last year has been incredible. It's really cool to finally see this thing come together. And there's a lot of back and forth and understanding what you guys wanted and we're going to continue to listen. So thank you for everybody that was involved in this process. We well, could huge shout out to Diddy, Diddy right? Because so. Pat has been a con huge contributing factor to the Juliet and Leonardo. So thank you, Pat, no and for helping everyone here get comfortable with it. Uh, let's, real quick, Vegas. For those, we might as well keep plugging, eh? <laughs> Vegas, we're going to be there Printing United, October 19th through yes. the 21st. We're going to be showing the Juliet in action. Mm -hmm. If you want to come to Vegas, Come check that out. We have information all over our uh, website. Yep. We'll be talking about it on our uh, socials leading up to it. Yep. If you can, make a trip. It'll be the Caesar North America booth. Yes. So you get to see a bunch of us there. So if you have a chance, if you're by Vegas, if you want to go to Vegas, um, make sure you stop at the Printing United October 19th through the 21st. Okay, I'm done. All right, all right let's get out of here. You guys take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye, guys.